Curious about using Azure IT Edge on Yocto? Uh, here, Kevin on the IT Show will tell us what you need to know about Yocto itself, how to bake it, and how to run IT Edge on it on the IT Show. Hi, everyone. You're watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Thanks for joining us. Today, we have Kevin Say with us. Kevin, thanks for joining the show again. Absolutely. So you've been on the show already, but yes. for those who have not had the chance to see that video, can you please give a short introduction of yourself to our audience? Great. Uh, my name is Kevin Say. I'm an IoT architect. I work in our partner group, so I help partners build solutions that include our IoT uh, capability and technology from Azure. So pretty interesting place to be. Awesome. So you have your hands dirty. Absolutely. On real projects with real customers. From hardware to OS all the way up. Absolutely. I love that. So you're here today to talk about something dear to your heart, which is Yocto, Linux Yocto. Can you tell us a bit about what is Yocto? And then we'll dive into some of the details and all the questions I have for you. Absolutely. Yocto Linux, it's an embedded form of Linux that came into existence about 2010. It's really for smaller devices that you want to just embed the OS in. So different than like a Red Hat or Ubuntu or something like that. So it's meant for that. It's based on the concept of what they call layers and recipes. And ultimately, the owner of this, because you do really own the OS, right? You compile it, you build it, you make the whole thing happen. So it's really for those people who want to build those type of solutions completely. So it's not just about an OS that is delivered in a monolithic way. It's like a set of tools, a set of, of, of libraries, a set of, of, of things that you can actually compose your OS with, right? Absolutely. It's about 80 gig in size for the building environment. It takes okay. over an hour to build it, depending on your capability. But you're ultimately building, compiling everything from scratch on OS. OK. So we'll see how that works, because when you say you're going to build the OS, I'm just like, whoa, are you building that on the device, on a development machine? So we'll talk a bit about that, right? Absolutely. 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 So what's the typical user of Yocto? Great question. Great question. I have in front of me a device from one of our partners, Eurotech. We have lots of devices. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the device catalog later. But this is an example of a single core ARM device mm -hmm. that, that really wouldn't even run Windows, doesn't have that capability. There's not enough horsepower there to do that. Okay. But that's a single purpose type of device. This particular mm -hmm. device has lots of serial inputs. Yep. So for these type of partners where they want to build and own their own OS, the drivers and everything with that, Yocto is an embedded form of Linux, different than Windows where they can leverage for that. So for those who choose that approach. Interesting, interesting. Funny you mention uh, different from Windows. Yeah. Because my next question was actually, you're wearing that Microsoft jacket here. Microsoft has a set of OSs like Windows, Windows IoT, and others. Um, so how is Yocto different from Windows IoT? Great question, great question. And you have to understand that this is a new Microsoft and the fact that we mm -hmm. see lots of different platforms, OSs, and needs out there. So we're not giving up on Windows. Still love Windows. It does amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Windows has a different use case in this scenario. Okay. If I am the device builder and I'm responsible for building and patching and open source and all those things there, I own a lot of responsibilities in that scenario. Mm -hmm. A lot of my partners and some of our customers don't want to take that responsibility. In that scenario, they say, Microsoft, can you build and compile and, and, and sign all the yeah, stuff, yeah. right? In that scenario, we take all responsibility for that. So if you want to build it from scratch, uh, a maker kind of scenario, yeah. Yocto might be your approach. Mm -hmm. If you want a supportive from a manufacturer like Microsoft, uh, Windows would be the great approach for that. Interesting. That, does that mean that Microsoft does not support Yocto in any sort of way? To pick Yocto, let's say I want to run Azure IT Edge, just picked randomly um, on my Yocto box. Yeah. What can I expect from Microsoft? Because that's still our framework that you want to run on that platform, right? It absolutely is. Support's a very difficult word here. Uh, I started Microsoft back in 94 and was supporting mm -hmm. Windows 95. A compiled OS, known way that it behaves. We went through lots of training for that. It's a supportable approach, right? Okay. I would suggest that even the uh, the modern Linuxes, the Red Hat, the Ubuntu, is right, uh, defined and compiled by those manufacturers, so very supportable as well. So we do have IoT Edge, as an example, yeah. supported on those. Mm. As I mentioned earlier, Yocto is different in the fact that you actually compile your own OS. Yeah. It's hard to support something where people can compile their own stuff. So support there, it takes a different approach, right? Mm -hmm. We call it a tier two o OS in the fact that we provide the recipes and layers. Those are those Yocto terms, right? Okay. But we allow people to run them. And we give some examples. I'll show later on today where we run it on a Raspberry Pi. We compile it where we prove mm -hmm. it works. 
that's just a starting point. From that point forward, if you're supporting the own OS as this device builder, you're kind of supporting all the pieces with it. So we give our best effort with that. Okay. So that's so, our approach of supporting. So you're not alone. If you pick Yocto, you want to run IT Edge on it, you're not alone. Like you have, you have support yes. uh, from Microsoft in the form of us delivering the code that will run on Yocto. And, and we have a community and we have help and, and things like that that actually uh, developers can rely on. Absolutely. We have a GitHub website where you just submit issues there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you're going to have this video because you're going to jump into a demo, like showing where to find the resources and how it's done. Um, we'll prove that it happens, and then okay. you're right. Then they take from a known good working scenario, mm -hmm. then they can modify as they see or need fit. Okay. So that's how we're kind of starting that scenario. Um, one other thing I want to talk about when we look at Windows as an example, yeah. right? Not only is it supported by Microsoft, right? We have a lot of our, our support services that can help from my partners who need a device maybe that stands in the wild, mm -hmm. right? Uh, from a security lockdown. Think about an ATM machine, yep. right? You want someone like Microsoft who would back you up on how to build and support that, right? Mm -hmm. So we do offer services around that. Yocto is a little different in that scenario. So just you have to. Consider those things when you're looking at how you want to go forward. Okay, with that. it's not a simple like like Linux versus Windows kind of choice. Yeah, and, and and the interesting point is we don't look at the versus thing from a Microsoft perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I work with partners who may have Linux off the shelf, may have Windows, or the one do mm -hmm. their on Yocto. We help them in all areas, right? We yeah. want to help them be successful in IoT and digital transformation. It's kind of what we do. Love it. Great. So we are going to walk through how yes. to build this. Okay. It's going to break down to five steps. We'll talk about those steps for a second. Okay. We're going to have a link where they can actually go through the, the whole website. Yep. All the works. steps. But it really breaks down to on a build machine. Uh -huh. So not on the ARM device. Not this guy. But on a build machine. And I okay. actually will spin up an Azure VM in, in our Azure IaaS. Okay. Because I want something with 16 or 32 CPUs. Oh, so you don't need a very powerful build machine, actually. You, you can rely on the cloud. Exactly. Right. Okay. One of the great things about a public cloud mm -hmm. is you're renting an OS hardware from that kind yeah, of scenario, yeah, yeah. right? Yep. It's great. When I run on this device, great device here, yep. this takes multiple hours. When I put it on a 32 way box in Azure, I can get it yeah. down to an hour. So there's a tricky question Is it a Windows VM or a Linux VM? A Linux VM. Okay. A Linux VM. That's what, uh, this, the build process is typically on Linux. So you will go through and you'll get all your requirements. Yep. All those items have to be there. Mm -hmm. Second, there's a couple of Git commands. Git will pull content, including our layers yep. and yep. recipe, mm -hmm. from GitHub. Mm -hmm. And third, that area, you actually configure it, how you want it to be set up. Okay. If it's an ARM32 or an ARM64. Okay. So you just go to configuration, yep. all part of the documentation. Yep. And the, the next step is the concept of layers and recipes. You'll bit bake. That's mm -hmm. a term they use. Okay. It's about baking the whole OS. Nice. The end well, result of that is a multi gig file that you'll mm -hmm. flash to the device. Okay. That, that reminds me for people who've been working with Windows Embedded, uh -huh. that reminds me Windows XP Embedded, right? Where you were actually composing your OS and generating the image of that yeah. OS and then flashing it. Absolutely. The concept of an embedded OS is a little different than a Windows desktop, right? Yeah, yeah. In a Windows desktop, we get updates all the time, right? New features, new capabilities. In the embedded world, they don't necessarily want that. Mm -hmm. You don't want your ATM, as an example, have a new feature that you hadn't tested or certified, yeah. right? An embedded OS, like Windows IoT, mm -hmm. it allows you to put an OS on there and locking down what features it would get. Only security, no new features. Okay. And a long-term support. With Windows IoT, we give 10 years of support, mm -hmm. as an example, mm -hmm. right? That's the term embedded. That's where you drive to that. So kind of with that, it's a pretty simple step. Yep. And then the last one I forgot to mention, of course, is we have IoT Edge on there, right? That's what the whole thing's about. Yep. You'll go through in your normal process of your config.yam on IoT okay. Edge or add your connection okay. string, all those things. Okay. I won't necessarily show that. People get that. They understand that. But we will go through the other process in that I like scenario. That. I like that. So let's with, jump in. with that, let's jump right in. Absolutely. So the first thing I'm going to do in this case here is I'm going to actually compile the image. Okay. Okay. So in here, we'll show on the screen right here. Let me try to maximize this if I can. In here, I'm actually on a Ubuntu host, right? So okay. we see this one's actually the 1804. Okay. That's where I'm at here. And I have already pulled down all those Git uh, commands, right? Where I'm pulled down all those. And I've already put out the, uh, uh, the required items there. Okay. I'm just going to actually compile. Okay. And to compile, we run bitbake okay. command. So I'll just kind of run that. And it's going to start kicking through. You'll see you'll pull stuff down. It's actually going to pull down 80 gig worth of information on this machine. Okay. And this can start compiling all the code because it pulls down source code, not mm -hmm. compiled binaries. Again, yeah. that's the difference. 
Got right? it. Got it. So, so what you'll see is it'll go through here. This one is, it says ARC64. I'm compiling for ARM64 in this scenario, right? Or ARM13, mm -hmm. whichever you want to mm -hmm. do, right? Mm -hmm. Great capability. Yocto can also be on, on non-ARM devices. Okay. So that's scenario. So I'm not going to make us wait the multiple hours to compile this. No, please not. <laughs> but like I any good chef, I'm going to switch over to a different screen where I actually have a completed image. Okay. So here we'll look at, if I run the command ls, you'll mm -hmm. see that I have a file on there called RPI. Okay. But it's actually 11 gig. Which is, which is decent. Absolutely. And I compile ones that are larger. Because what we do in this scenario, the size of the file will be flashed to the SD card okay. on this device. And it's the full size of the disk. If okay. you have a 64 gig... It's just an image of this, not compressed, whatever. Is there a notion of debug, non-debug images? There is not. Okay. This is a finished product. Okay. Once you compile... Now, if you want a, a debug mode, right, you'd compile a different image. Got it. Okay. But it's meant to be the finished, finished object. Okay. Right? Makes sense. And a difference here, it doesn't really get updates. It doesn't do Windows update or in those kinds of scenarios. It's done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's a difference, right? You own it. So how you own it, how, how if I want to update it? Is it like a full like update of everything? Or Absolutely. then from there, uh, do I have a way to update parts of the OS? Absolutely. From an OS perspective, mm -hmm. you just got to format and reinstall. Okay. IoT Edge, though, right? It runs as a containerized mm -hmm. fashion, right? Yeah, yeah. Those can be updated by just pulling down the new uh, image. Mm, right. Okay. That's a little yeah, different. Yeah. That's really up in the application stack at this level. Got so it. a yeah. little different in that scenario. Yeah. So if I have a security patch to apply to my OS, it's going to be a refresh of the actual what we would call the firmware, basically. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's exactly. It. That's the embedded mentality. Okay. So that's kind of how that works Makes out. Sense. So here we see that we have a 11 gig file, right? Mm -hmm. I've already flashed it on this particular Raspberry Pi device. Okay. So let's go take a look at that as well. I'm just going to. Well, actually, let me switch back to this one for a second. This is one of ours building, bit yeah, making. Yeah, yeah. Notice it's showing 16 there. Yeah. It's running a, a task on each core CPU. Okay. That's okay. why you need lots okay. of it. That's why you and need the VM in the cloud. Yeah. And it's killing the CPU right now, and it will for over an hour. <laughs> that's the, what we're talking yeah. about there, right? That's if why you need, you know, I have this ticker that's pretty funny, which is like, there's no cloud, it's just someone else's computer. Yeah. There is a cloud, guys, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I do now want to just jump over to this box. So yes. now I'm actually going to SSH into Yocto running okay. on this Raspberry Pi, okay. just an ARM device. So I'm going to run SSH command as root. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I run the same command, you name, mm -hmm. it tells me what it is there. So it tells me it's on the ARM device. Okay. And if I run IoT Edge list, it shows me the modules that are running. Okay. So did you did you install the IoT Edge runtime in the bake process, or did you add it after? It had to be in the bake process. Okay. Remember, it kind of goes down there, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. An embedded mentality. So it had to be in the bake process. Okay. What we provide are the recipes and layers that you include in that bake process. Yes. Think okay. about cinnamon in your cake or something. That. Okay. Absolutely. Makes sense. Absolutely. I want to show a couple of us. So here we see it's running, mm -hmm. right? It's running our favorite, the temp sensor simulator, right? So all the models you would think about are there running. I'm going to run the command top for a second here, mm -hmm. just to show that this device right here is 97% idle okay. on a single so, arm, so, so. on a four core on this device, right? Okay. And we see a couple of the .NET items in there, right? L okay. Using a little bit of memory. So it really shows that on this device, remember, meant for low hardware type of scenarios, embedded uh, Linux, okay. right? Nothing else is really running. Right? Okay. Just the minimal stuff. Yeah, just about, what we need. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When you do that bit bake and the, that configuration, you say, here are the things I want, and it figures out what's required for mm. that, such as uh, a container runtime, yep. right? all those things. So that's kind of running on okay. that device. So the process was pretty simple, simple yep. right? We went yep. through the few steps, right? Yep. Uh, we set up our, I use Ubuntu, we set up our build environment. Yeah, yeah. I could use uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux on the Windows 10 as well, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And that's why I'm running all my uh, consoles here. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, certainly. But remember, when I build, I build on big horsepower. Yeah, it's going to put your machine down if you do locally. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So certainly. Uh, but. We just see the build process, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So I, I pulled the required items down. I pulled from a Git, pulls all the recipes down, those that we provide, right? Mm -hmm. Run the config file, all part of the documentation, okay. and build it or bit bake it in this yep. scenario, flash it over there, and you're up and running. Pretty Easy. straightforward process. Pretty straightforward. I think you wrote a blog post that actually describes all of that and gives all the resources that people need. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it'll be in the video. Yeah. I would look at the blog post as a beginning point. Okay. Right? Because remember, if you're doing Yocto, you're going to kind of own your own and modify your own stuff. That's a known good starting point. Uh -huh. From that point, you'll kind of go down the path you want. And if you have any 
concerns, issues, or questions about the IoT Edge layers, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, just submit on our GitHub site uh, any questions or concerns or issues. I love it. You were also mentioning like partners. Um, we have a catalog of these devices yes. that are certified for Azure IoT. Yes. And actually, some of them are running Yocto with these partners maintaining these firmwares for our customers, right? You were mentioning that. You're absolutely right. Uh, this one, just as an example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Eurotech's a great partner. We yep. have lots of them, right? Yep. So I'm not choosing one. But they do a great job and they maintain everything on it. They support it. They reach out to us if there's any concern or question yep. about yep. our layers, but they own everything else. Okay, so. I love it. Kevin, excellent overview of what Yocto is and how Microsoft is supporting and working with Yocto and customers picking Yocto as their favorite OS for their embedded devices. Thanks for coming to the IoT Show today. If you want to learn more, you can go check out Kevin's blog at aka.ms slash IoT Show slash IoT Edge on Yocto. Hope to see you soon on the IoT Show. Thanks.